podcast sponsored by investorshangout.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes and YouTube to stay up to date on penny stock news and interviews. Public information on OTC, pink sheets, and micro cap stocks from around the world. Here's your host, Everett Jolly. On today's show, I'm super excited to bring a company that I discovered about two or three months ago. We're talking no other than Cardiff Lexington Corporation. They are a publicly holding company. Uh, Cardiff Lexington is, is led by a strong and talented team of executives, advisors providing expert uh, acquisitions and market guidance and added value for their uh, subsidiaries uh, and investors. Uh, you can find them on the OTCQB under the ticker symbol CDIX. Unless you've been hiding under a rock, this has probably been one of the hottest stocks the last month with the volume spiking a lot. And with us today to talk about his company, bring us up to speed, is the CEO and president of it, Alex Cunningham. Alex, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. You know, it's just been over just probably a year since uh, your company acquired Platinum Tax Defenders. Uh, how is that acquisition going, and, and what do you see going in the future? It's worked out really well. When Carter Flexington approached Platinum Tax Defenders it, as an acquisition strategy last year, back in 2018, we saw tremendous growth opportunity in that Southern California-based tax resolution company. And Sherry Gastelum and her team there are just doing a great job. In fact, in, in, in the year since we acquired them, they've enjoyed a 63% year-over-year revenue increase, and that's the highest in their history. Uh, we, we brought to their team the necessary resources and support to continue to expand their reach and to execute, and we continue to see unprecedented, unprecedented growth and opportunity for expansion in that sector. It's just exciting for our shareholders, the, the growth that they've experienced. And under our umbrella, we look forward to positioning this company for even more exponential growth in the future as we continue to expand in that financial services arena. Alex, when I discovered your company a, a couple of months ago, I, I was impressed on on different many different levels. One level is in 2009, 2019 already, you guys have uh, did 2.1 million in revenue. Your market cap's at 1.2 million. Uh, as as you know, uh, as the CEO of the company and, and president, uh, the volume has increased immensely over there. What do you take from all this? Well, I think we're doing some things that are drawing attention and, and we're happy to see the, the increased volume. We think that we're, I guess, like management of most public companies feel like that we're dramatically undervalued. And we think our market cap is really artificially low based upon an artificially low uh, share price. Uh, we have had some necessary convertible debt that, that has been trading out. And, and we knew that we were going to be increasing the float doing that. And, and, and we knew that we needed to do that to some extent on a variety of levels. But, it, but it's very controlled. And, and we would like to see uh, uh, the stock price more reflect the accomplishments that we've already put to, on the books and the, and the things that we're doing going forward. And we think that volatility is people just aren't really sure yet. And uh, uh, as, as we continue to post good numbers, I've always believed that that the market recognizes performance over time. And if we just keep doing what we're doing, the, the, the value in the stock will, will continue to rise and catch up and the market value will be more reflective of what's going on. I want to change gears here. Recently, you guys uh, put out a, a press release about maybe a, a letter of intent with a Sela uh, Biomedical. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Well, we did put out a press release. We, we've tried to be relatively transparent. We, we normally do not put out a press release on letters of intent. We, we made that decision again a little over a year ago. Uh, but we did need to acknowledge in our forward statements in our Q2 filing that these discussions were taking place and that we had entered into a letter of intent. And that created a lot of buzz in the market, a fair amount of misinformation and speculation and 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 all of those things that are incumbent with being an OTC company and and and, and having penny stock day traders in your stock, uh, everybody uh, that doesn't have information makes up information. So, so we felt, you know, <laughs> you know how that goes. And so, so we we I do. So we felt that incumbent upon ourselves and to protect our shareholders, 
and, and, and really to protect the seller biomedical who was getting barraged with unsolicited requests for information that we put out a press release. And, and, and essentially, a, a seller biomedical is a verified hemp grower, distributor, processor, extractor, and retailer specializing in CBD oil production. And, and we think our partnership with Acela just affords Carter Flexington an incredible opportunity. Uh, Acela farmers currently in Kentucky have over two and a half million hemp plants in the ground. I've been in the fields, uh, over 10,000 acres uh, that we traveled across in pickup trucks, and, and, and the plant looks wonderful. It's about waist high in, in, in some areas and, and almost chest high in others. Uh, this is a cell is a clinical stage biotech company that produces only the highest quality pharmaceutical grade purest CBD oil, which is why they really attracted our attention. They reside on, uh, near the Ohio River in Maysville, Kentucky, in a 122,000 square foot facility on 14 acres that has uh, has room to meet their growth, and they have a second location of about 34,000 square feet in a facility on another 14 acres in Winchester, Ohio, where, where they're doing some greenhouse operations and, and have some big expansion plans. And, and Ohio just recently uh, uh, passed some, some hemp laws, but they've already passed medical marijuana in the state, and that affords a whole nother level of opportunity. So essentially, a cell biomedical is a, a seed to shell quality CBD hemp cultivation and CBD oil production company. And they have soil to bottle, rigorous, tested, highest quality organic retail products and the best in class extraction methods. Uh, their work with plant genetics is cutting edge within the hemp industry. And we're in some discussions with some very interesting people to, to, to formulate and build a seed bank in Kentucky. And uh, at this point, I guess Acela represents about 10% of Kentucky's hemp growers and nearly 30% of the existing uh, greenhouse cloning capacity. This company's been under the radar, but, but over the past four years of research and development, they have developed their own unique hybrid breeding program, and they have road tested, formulated through trial and error, really, really refined their extraction process and capability with our help and what we're bringing to the table. They're going to be able to expand that extraction capacity. And in 2020, we expect them to be able to exceed 9,000 liters of CBD oil production per month. That's really important when you understand that one liter of high quality CBD oil sells for a thousand to three thousand dollars currently on the market. So we see a you know, we see a really strong uh, interest from tobacco farmers that we believe can are transitioning to hemp at, at, a, at an increasing uh, uh, in, in increasing numbers and, and and combined with the ideal growing conditions that you get in that uh, burley tobacco belt, uh, this will make Kentucky the epicenter of the CBD oil industry in the United States. And, and, and in Excella, I think Cardiff Lexington has found a future partner that's a proven stage clinical uh, biomedical company that differentiates them greatly from other hip growers. And they're leading the way in Kentucky. And we're just really thrilled at the prospect of, of partnering with them. I don't want you to take this the wrong the wrong way, Alex, but uh, why are you so bullish on, on hemp and CB uh, oil industry, especially in Kentucky, when I feel that you might be a little bit too late to the game? Well, it's actually really early in Kentucky, and it's certainly really early in hemp, and, 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 and they're good questions. I, 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 I'll tackle it in, 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 I guess, two phases. First of all, why hemp? And, and, and we, like many companies out there, have been looking and watching and, and wanting to find a way into the cannabis industry. Uh, with the growth throughout the country has has been phenomenal. Uh, we've looked at multiple absolutely. You know, we've looked at multiple transactions in in collateral businesses and directly in, in in cannabis. It's such a hot sector. You know the double digit growth is there and and and, and the ROI is just impressive. And it, we, we just could not find something that, that A, worked for us and B, worked for them. And, and, and some of the problems revolve around the legalization of marijuana and, and, and all of the all the issues and conversations that that, that generates. With hemp, uh, and the, more importantly, the CBD oil it produces, 
there, there are many uses and applications without most of that controversy that surrounds marijuana, whether it's medical or, 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 or legalizing uh, it for recreational use. CBD oil is solely a medicinal crop, and, and it does not have a recreational component. So we think that that, that hemp's ideally positioned uh, to be a, a contributor to many products uh, to help with inflammation and a host of things that aren't even discovered yet. And, and, and so that's a good fit. Why Kentucky? Well, we've got deep roots in Kentucky, Ohio, West Virginia, Tennessee. Uh, it's a region that we've lived in, grown up in. We've closely followed the, the developments of hemp. Uh, there's been tremendous support in Kentucky, including the Kentucky uh, Agricultural Commissioner Ryan Quarles and uh, Senator Mitch McConnell, who for years have been out front leaders promoting hemp and its many benefits, and, and they really kind of put Kentucky on the forefront uh, it, with their hard work. So, you know, Kentucky has very experienced tobacco farmers, and, and, and the burly tobacco segment of the tobacco businesses was always the highest and best crop because of the region it was grown in and the perfect growing conditions. And hemp is very similar to that and, and likes those same conditions. The type of hemp plant you grow for CBD oil is the difference than the type of hemp plant that you grow for clothes or rope or to make sales. There, there's there are multiple uses for hemp and they come from different plants that are genetically diverse. And, and, Absolutely. and so- you know, Kentucky is, is quickly becoming the epicenter of high CBD content hemp grown specifically for CBD oil. And with the opportunity to rebuild family farms throughout that Appalachian region and, and to some extent uh, uh, impact local economies is, is compelling. And it embraces what Cardiff Lexington is all about. You know, we, we on our front of our our website say we're, we're 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 from main street to wall street and we're truly want to improve <laughs> lives you know we we want to not only we want to go from the farm to wall street and, and we we want to to make a great return for our investors but we 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 want the, our employees and the subsidiary owners of our companies their owners through our preferred stock to to do well and to prosper and all of us be able to reinvest back into those communities and in, into civic and charitable organizations and this is the kind of, of once in a lifetime growth opportunity of an entire industry that it was just it just hard not to, to, to try to find a way in. You know, Brightfield Group uh, said in 2017 that CBD oil sales were about $291 million, and they forecast in 2021 that CBD oil sales are going to be $1.65 million. That's a right. huge jump. And so I don't think we're too late to the party. We're, yeah, it's, it's $1.56 really Yes, 1.65 billion. So we're truly at the early stages of this industry development. And as the science-based methods drive innovative CBD products in both the wholesale and retail space, uh, it, this is going to transform a whole region of the country. I agreed. Alex, unfortunately, we're running out of time, but uh, I, I do appreciate you coming on the show. As for my listeners, I think I'm bringing you a brand new company. It's I would take a look at it. It's my personal opinion. They're grossly undervalued here under a half a penny a share. We're talking about Cardiff Lexington Corporation. My guest today is Alex Cunningham. He's the CEO and president of that company. You can find him on the OTCQB under the ticker symbol CDIX. Alex, it's a pleasure to speak with you. Hope you become a regular on the show. Come back in 40 or 50 days and give us an update of what's going on with your company. We'd love to come back. Thank you for taking the time to listen to a little bit about where we're headed and uh, have a great day. This program is entirely sponsored and produced by La Jolla Media LLC, which is responsible for the content. The opinions and information provided on this program are for educational and research purposes. Stock Day encourages all listeners of this program to do their due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that will work for them or to seek the assistance of an investment professional. 